leader and back with us is Jonathan Allen. Uh, Yamish, the president has a big party tomorrow night, a big party, a big ticket uh, thing at, at uh, Mar-a-Lago. Uh, the Daily Beast is reporting that two, close, closes, two sources close to the president, one a White House official and the other a longtime confidant, told the Daily Beast how excited he was for the event and relayed his growing concern that the potential failure to strike a deal to keep the federal government open could keep him from, quote, my party, as the president has said. Uh, I'm headed out to Davos, actually, this weekend, where the president is also going. Um, this is hard stuff for him. Uh, this is his first anniversary uh, tomorrow. Uh, he's got a big party, and then he's going out to show the world what a great job he's doing as president, except he isn't. I mean, it's not hard to imagine President Trump essentially walking the halls of the White House fuming because his anniversary of um, his inauguration is essentially met with more chaos and, and essentially an image of a, of a government that is literally not functioning. Um, it, it's everybody who understands Donald Trump understands that he really likes to have a good time. He loves going to all his different residences, including Mar-a-Lago. So the idea that he would have this big party planned and then have have to essentially be stuck in D.C. doing work and, and having to deal with Democrats and having to figure out what the what the deal is going to be, um, that would, uh, it would just most certainly anger him. So I think that the, the issue here, of course, is that the president is some, in some ways has been so contradictory and has really added to the to, to this issue. Um, his, his comments about immigrants really was a cloud that was hanging over Congress while these talks were going on. Then uh, throughout this whole entire week, he was sending out contradictory tweets saying that he didn't evolve on the wall, that he didn't want CHIP to be included. Um, and then tonight, while I was reading the White House press statement about the shutdown, I was struck by how much it sounded like Donald Trump wrote it himself. Mm -hmm. He called Democrats losers. obstructionists losers. Yep. He said he essentially pitted immigrants with America against Americans. So it's just a remarkable moment right now. So I want to I bring Jonathan into this, but I, I, I want to just continue with you for a second, because after the president made his remarks last Thursday, you and I talked, Yamish, and we have some in common, and that is your, your parents, I believe, are from Haiti? Yes. And, and I was born in Africa. So you and I uh, are both from those countries that the president talked about. Did he poison the well last Thursday? Uh, Lindsey Graham keeps talking about the Tuesday president and the Thursday president. He wants the Tuesday president back. That's the one you can make a deal with. That's the one who seemed to care about uh, immigrants and getting a deal. The Thursday president was a hateful, mean racist. There is no question that President Trump's comments about immigrants and the vulgarity that came out of that meeting um, essentially almost doomed these talks. The idea that the Democratic senators not only had to answer to a base that was very angry about the continuing extension of DACA, um, of, of DACA recipients having to wait for their fortunes, but also this idea that now Democrats were going to say that they were going to be negotiating with someone who essentially said that immigrants um, of, of African descent and of African and descent and Haitians were, were less than or somehow not as valuable as Norwegians who are most of the time white people. So there's this idea that just the, the Congressional Black Caucus this week introduced a move um, to censure him, um, censure President Trump because of those comments. So there was no talking about this deal without a continually having to answer and answer questions about the president's comments. And I think dreamers that have been showing up to the, to the Hill, showing up to the White House outside the doors, begging lawmakers essentially to take their lives into consideration. They had more fuel mm -hmm. by the fact that the president said those comments. Jonathan, I want to show you a poll that uh, New Washington Post, ABC News poll asking who is responsible for the shutdown. Uh, Trump and Republicans, 48 percent. Democrats, 28 percent, both equally, 18 percent. I would say that that poll is a great victory for advocates of DACA and the Dreamers because Really, Republicans are saying, how did this shutdown happen? Why is it related uh, to uh, what they call an illegal immigration bill? But the pressure from those people who want permanent status or a path to citizenship for uh, the dreamers uh, have succeeded in, in, it seems, make, convincing the nation that this is really important and needed to be done. Uh, I think there are, there's other polling that suggests that, uh, that perhaps uh, folks are less excited broadly about uh, shutting down the government over the DACA issue. I think when you look at, you know, obviously it's an aggregate of, of the people that were polled, but, uh, or an aggregation of the people that were polled. What you see there for certain, I think, is that 
the American public understands that Republicans are in control of the White House, in control of the Senate, and in control of the House. And so whether they place that blame at the feet of the White House or at the feet of Congress, uh, you see Republicans aligned all the same. And, you know, there was a, an argument made earlier today uh, from the White House podium, can't remember if it was Mark Short, the legislative director, uh, what, uh, uh, or Mick Mulvaney, the OMB director, but one of them said, you know, Republicans don't have 60 votes in the Senate right. and you need 60 votes to do everything. Republicans have not had 60 votes in the United States Senate since 1911, right. which is before the direct election of senators. So, uh, you know, th that argument, basically, if you run the Senate, it's your job to get enough votes from the other side to get basic legislation done. So there's an interesting mathematical issue here. I want to put that poll up again. 48% on this poll, and I, I get your point that this may evolve, uh, and the question isn't who's responsible to shut down over DACA, uh, but 48% say Trump and Republicans. Twice that number, Yemi, somewhere between 80 and 92%, depending on what poll you look at, say that the DACA issue needs to be solved in a way that the dreamers want it solved. In other words, with a path to citizenship or uh, permanent status. So how do, this is, the, this is the, 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 the needle that Democrats have to thread. The country is of one mind on dreamers and on, on dealing with these immigration issues and not necessarily of one mind on everything else. And essentially, dreamers are the most sympathetic group of, of immigrants and of undocumented immigrants. That's why their message is so clear. That's why their message is one that both Democratic voters and Republican voters agree on, because most people think that if you were brought to a place when you were 10 years old or, or as an infant, that it's not—you should not bear the responsibility and then be deported to a country where you might not even speak the language. So I think it's pretty clear on that. The thing I think about that poll when I look at it, the, the I—, I I almost feel like I want to do that poll now that the government is actually shut down, because I think on, across the board, people are going to be mad at D.C. and mad at lawmakers in general. Mm -hmm. I think that there's this idea that Americans, regular working Americans, people who are going to stop getting their paychecks, I'm thinking of military families who have mm -hmm. to go to work, but then whose commissary is closed down, so they're paying more money for their milk and butter, while also not being able to get paychecks, whether or not those people are going to look at D.C. and just be disgusted with both yep. parties and say, we can't trust these people at all. I remember that I remind people that the constitutional obligations uh, for Congress are appropriations. The one thing the Constitution says Congress has to do is appropriations. The one thing that Congress continues to do.